and we're back. Welcome everybody to more Star Ladder I League Invitational action here. We're beyond the summit and we're covering the second best of three today. It's gonna to be Team Alternate versus Elements Pro Gaming. I'm Gods and joining me in just a second once I get him on the call is gonna be Scant. Um, and we've already seen Team Havost or Team Fantastic Five win the earlier best of three today in the round of round of twelve, round of sixteen. Well there's twelve teams. Uh, what would be the uh, whatever round becomes for the quarterfinals? Um, we did see Fantastic Five advance, but here we're going to see Elements versus Alternate. It is single elimination, so it's really do or die for these teams, and uh, we're going to see how things kind of unravel here. Elements, a new roster for them. Something, well, I say new roster. It's not the main team that people are used to seeing. It's and they're what was formerly their B team that's been upgraded, and they're taking on Team Alternate, which has been a bit more of a stable team of late, uh, kind of on the cusp of breaking out as far as the European. Uh, Dota scene goes, but uh, I believe Scant's now with me. Scant, how you doing? Yep, uh, Polish Dota team alternate. They're yes. all Polish, and um, have they had any I don't changes, think or are they been completely stable? Do you know? I, th I think they're completely stable. Um, I know that. Yeah, well, I can't tell what their nicknames are. One of them, one of these players is Supreme. I think John is Supreme because I think that. Yeah, Misha I saw Supreme in the in the lobby because in the lobby it shows their their nicknames. It's got to be, yeah, yeah, because those are all the other players. So I think the person called John is actually called Supreme, and the other four, they're not, yeah, then it's their normal five. They haven't changed. And it's interesting that Elements actually first pick Invoker because Invoker's like Supreme's big hero. He's like really one of the better Invokers I've seen, and that includes like tier one players. It's something that like stood out for me watching this team. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, I think they're actually quite good. I think, I mean, Supreme's so good that when Puppy won the major, he said he felt like him. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's who he's talking about, Scan. Exactly yeah, he was that guy from Team Alternate. That's yeah. now I know what it feels like to be him. That's, yep, uh, shout to that he's guy. He's always winning mid. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, so um, according to Liquipedia, this is they changed a player about two or three weeks ago, which was like, I mean, well before the roster reshuffle, which is when one of their supports was changed. But other than that, this roster's been stable for about a year now. So uh, very much a committed team to playing together, an all Polish team, like you mentioned. and. Um, a team that's looking to kind of break out. Wait, is the newer player, uh, I don't know, is, is it Kat Sor? Yes, Kat, Kat Sor, yeah. Okay. okay, yeah. Sure. So he joined on March 8th, according to, to Liquipedia. Yeah, I think that could be right. I think that's like the least recognizable name for me. Um, it's, it's hard to forget Supreme and Exotic Deer. <laughs> they're two core players. <laughs> like, Exotic Deer is a great name. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's cool it's like old stuff. chicken, sort of. It's, yeah. it's like... Just like any, I think I almost feel like just about any adjective in an animal would be like a great nickname for a player, especially when like they don't match at all. Like I think that's what's great about old chicken. It's just like why, <laughs> you don't. What does an old chicken look like? What does an exotic deer look like? It's, it's great. It, it, it asks many questions. I've heard. I was, I spoke to some translators and Chinese people when we were at the Shanghai Major. And I, I heard some people say that old chicken actually means it's like got some kind of idiomatic meaning. It means like, like something like a creepy like sort of dodgy shady kind of person and okay. i think it's meant to be like a joke like like sort of like deliberately like oh i'm just this shady old guy when he actually isn't but yeah that's Ten seconds, all right well like you say alternate getting their invoker taken away from them that's been like it like their last 10 games they played invoker in like three quarters of them it appears and uh, instead they're gonna get the nature's prophet bounty hunter so a lot of kind of early game presence here and i mean this has always been at least somewhat the theme of the, the current patch as of late is just being able to fight being able to apply pressure early on yeah and another one of the um signature supreme heroes is actually the dp which elements do ban out so they've done either they've done research or they've scrimmed against them or they know them but taking the invoke and banning the dp it, to me it suggests an understanding of team alternates another thing that i'd seen um team alternate do very well with is exotic they're playing ursa I don't think this is really an Ursa game, though. It looks like elements are pretty well set up to deal with an Ursa. Yeah, that's it. All the heroes, all three of their heroes, match up at least fairly decently and are good at kiting and locking down the Ursa should they need to. So, be surprised if they go for the Ursa. They are on Dire side, so they probably want something with some Roche taking potential. And they're going to get Lone Druid, so there's a safe lane or mid Lone Druid by the looks of things with the Nature's Prophet already picked up for alternate. Yeah, I, I I think it'll probably just be the safe lane, Lone Druid. Um, it's not the bear I was asking for, but it's still a bear. And it's it's actually, it's it's interesting because Lone Druid and Nature's Prophet are such big heroes of this patch. 
but it's quite rare that you see them picked together. Um, and I think it's probably one of the main reasons for that is that it gives away a lot about your draft if you pick these two heroes together. There's a very specific way that your draft has to work. The enemy team can already decide during the draft phase how they want to go about approaching it, how they're going to deal with what you're setting up. And even though, I mean, in our previous series we were talking about how in game one the team with a witch doctor and a spirit break were very limited in how they could approach the early game. I, I feel like there's something maybe similar here for Team Alternates in the sense that they're you know, the Lone Druid's quite static, the Witch Doctor's quite static, Bounty is not a static hero, it's all over the place, but it, it still plays the game in, a, in only really one way. You know, you're trying to snipe the crew, you're trying to harass mid lane, you're trying to harass enemy supports, so there's there's some kind of predictability about what team alternates are doing with their laning stage here, and it's, it's maybe something that elements could take advantage of. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely saying like uh, early game weakness, like you say. If you have too many of those static heroes, that oh, well, you don't have to worry about this hero leaving his lane or doing something. There's nothing unpredictable a lone can do, can do early on, and whatever mid hero is going to be there, the mid hero doesn't want to go roaming early on. Like you're, you can expect the puck, which is now picked up a kind of good fit because they needed a tempo controller, some kind of initiator. But it's a hero who's not going to leave the mid lane until at least something like level seven. Like that's just not really going to be in alternate interest the one here the heroes that can be active is the bounty and to maybe a slightly lesser extent the nature's profit yeah so it give i mean look if the bounty finds an opening and the nature's profit comes in all of a sudden you could see some early game domination it's always possible for bounty hunters to snipe a courier as well it's it's one of those things that like it's been known about for years now but it still happens occasionally in games um especially recently i've seen I think the first one I saw was Kuroki on Bounty Hunter, starting with Boots and not Orb of Venom. And I think when the Bounty does start with Boots, it makes the, the snipe less obvious in the sense that you can... Like, sometimes people guide their career to try and dodge the Bounty Hunter. And if you have the Boots, you can actually just chase after it and catch it sometimes. Yeah. Alright, well, last pick into the Spectre. And I feel like this is something Elements can easily get away with. And it's not even something that's really considered a greedy pick so much anymore because of how well this hero actually fights and can uh, just apply pressure, find pickoffs, find some kills and really catch up. When you hit level 6 you get phase boots, you get earned. So uh, I hear that I feel can actually do very well this game. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, it's... Like, the only games that are bad games for Spectre are the games where the Spectre has an unlaneable lane. Like, those, those games are really, really... I mean, and even those games, actually, I think there was a team... I think Fnatic actually in one of the C qualifiers recently, I, I saw them do a lineup where they actually basically abandoned their Spectre. They had just this Avengeful Spirit covering their Spectre, and all the other heroes were focused on controlling the other two lanes, and they they lost the safe lane. But Neto was playing Spectre there, just kind of didn't die, got levels, and from level 6 got involved, and it's quite easy actually to get gold that way as a Spectre. You get your level 6, you maybe have like one small item like an urn, and can't get involved. So. It's, it's interesting, because for me, that's maybe the biggest weakness of the hero, is having a really difficult lane stage, but I have very specifically seen a team recently give it a weak lane stage and be totally fine with it. No, I, if, I, if, you know. I totally agree. And I, I, you see it the most in, in pub games. Obviously, they're not representative of pro games, so even at high level, like, you can... I've seen so many times in games I've played or other high-level, like, MMR games, where there'll be a Spectre, he, he's against, like, an unlaneable lane, like, he'll have, like, some... Undying plus Necrophos or something in his lane, he'll get crushed, he'll have 5 CS at 8 minutes in, and then all it takes is to hit that level 6, and suddenly you're involved in 1 or 2 kills, and you gradually catch up. That's not quite representative of what's going to happen in pro games, because there's more organization. Teams with an advantage will know how to work around the advantage to not give chances for a Spectre to catch up, but even at the pro level, it can happen, and it has been done where a hero like Spectre can catch up, and you've got, your Spectre doesn't need to be the most farmed hero in the game, you've got an Invoker kind of to fill that pseudo-carry role as well, so even if, if Spectre's having a rough time and Beastmaster and Invoker do well, you've got plenty of firepower without Spectre. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that actually comes to highlight what I I think the, well, Beastmaster is going to trade a little bit with Witch Ducks and Puck, but I don't think anyone's likely to go down here. I, I think that really the, the only foolproof way of dealing with a Spectre is you shut the Spectre down in lane, and you also win the other lanes. But that's like, it's such a silly thing to say, because it's like, I'm pretty sure you counter every hero in the game by winning all three lanes, yes. right? So it's <laughs> it, like, if it is true, Spectre's not going to come back into the game by getting a Haunt if Spectre's teammates are also struggling, because usually the Haunt is kind of like, just to be there, add that little bit, and the teammate doing well is the one really doing the work. So it, I, I guess the point is that the team against the Spectre, if they like go hardcore early game dominance to control the lanes, that can be a good strategy. Yeah. Well, 
Right now, it looks like it's just going to be the Nature's Prophet alone in the offlane. There is a bounty, a bounty roaming, but I can't imagine this bounty is going to be able to do much at bottom with the Nature's Prophet. There's dust, there's sentries. Uh, elements can easily counteract and counterplay this bounty hunter, who is coming down sort of towards this bottom lane. Uh, has wards on, on hand, which he's going to start by dropping down. But yeah, as, as you'd expect, he's swinging back towards mid. Puck, who won the block, actually gets a lot of harass off early on onto the Invoker. Yeah, that's Supreme just... Uh, he stood enemy side and just shut the invoker arts and this is for me it's he's kind of star player of the team he's also got a very good understanding of invoker and i think players who play invoker a lot have especially the understanding that one of the weaknesses of the hero is right at the beginning at level one it's it's really not that much of a presence Man, in lane that was some brave curry he just used the courier straight down the lane to bring a salve with bounty hunter missing off the map that, i feel like that that's one of those things which normally would get punished by a bounty hunter but just luckily for the invoker bounty was not there in lane and also luckily his sentry which is for the bounty hunter scouts on an observer ward so gets a big win out of that sentry but with yeah. that said they've still found the rotation in yeah and they maybe kill him here the puck needs to be careful not to die to the top self-cancelled though so they don't get the kill but this is still uh, gonna be tough for Invoker. Gets his self cancelled, yeah. has to bring out another, loses his sentry ward on the high ground. Bounty will get the extra Tengu regen to heal back up. Life is looking good for alternate in this middle lane. I wonder if, you know what, it's interesting that the Bounty Hunter again leaves, because I feel like you have to know that there's another self coming out and it's another attempt to, yeah. like, potential opening for the courier. Dusk gets the bounty rune, and uh, him and the bounty himself fight over it, but. Uh, yeah, Satan gets his second salve out, so he's sitting on 4 CS here, having chewed through 2 salves, 2 tangos, really needs some catch up time, and Puck is not giving him much space here in this mid lane. It's quite a... <laughs> it's funny, like if you look at the names, this is like a biblical lane, and it's John <laughs> versus Satan. But, uh... Perfect. I don't think there's After a Orbis used... in the Bible, unfortunately. <laughs> I almost expected Tusk to just go in after Orb was used. Yeah, he's going, he's going. Yep. Whoa. Oh, he gets the phase shift dodge. Silence have followed up at the... Oh, can he orb out of there? Yeah, he will. The cold snap, not going to be enough damage. They will dust up the bounty, who's just going to pop on out, do as much damage as he can. Should be fine here. No mana for a sun strike. And then Thurvian they... will get the Tango. I think they waited a little bit too long. I mean, it looked like they did go on the basis of Orb's cooling down, but they waited a few seconds, and by the, by the time they were like midway through the gank, the Orb was ready again. It's... Quite a short cooldown spell. Yeah, because with he phase shift dodged the snowball sun, but he was if he doesn't have the, the second orb, he likely goes down there. So perhaps not quite the outcome that elements were hoping for, and like you say, perhaps a, a little bit hesitant with the orb. Looking at these some of these other lanes, so nature's profit getting what you'd kind of expect a bit of farm, enough levels out of this lane. We'll be going for the fast phase boots, but uh, Spectre getting alright farm here, not quite the free farm of the lone druid who's seeing on the 20 CS, but at least getting the farm you'd somewhat hope for in the early early on stages. It's not the strongest of lanes with this Bane oh, plus Spectre dueling. Oh, could get dived. Yeah, there's an Orb of Venom on the Spirit, but I think he's gonna die. Yep. yep, and it's lone druid getting it, so look at a very fast Radiance at this rate. And, uh, oh, interesting possibly. thing I noticed... Oh. That's right. Bottom lane meanwhile. Nature's Prophet getting That's... dived out, can't TP away, so kills in all three lanes. Getting two of the three. And we'll see. Yeah, the, uh, the interesting thing I've noticed is uh, Beastmaster's not got any Call of the Wild, and I, I think it might be because he's against a Witch Doctor, so doesn't want to give extra target to Bounce. But at the same time, it's like all oh, of the Beastmaster, please! TP's in, immediately gets rooted up. I don't even think he can blame the root for that one. He got cast as well, so even if the root doesn't come, I think that was just a suicidal TP regardless. And... They're going to yep. lose the tower, gives up another kill. Lone Druid's going to be 2-0 with first blood and a tower at like 5 minutes in. This is what I want to ask you, like is it... I, I feel like the reasoning of not taking your boar and your hawk is you don't want more targets for cask, but I also feel like you have no laning presence without the boar. It's like, oh, it's going to be a solo kill for Supreme on the mid lane. Yeah, yeah. we, we caught, caught that one, so just traded hits, coiled him, and then waited for the coil stun before throwing an orb, so... Easy kill for Supreme, who also had a regen rune, so he's back to fighting shape, so... I, I mean, I, I just think Call of the Wild is just a spell you can't forego. It's just that good. Like, there's... Nice. You don't really get much out of the Wild Axis. Maybe it gets you 1 or 2 CS, but Call of the Wild just, in general, offers so much. 
So he's got it now at level 3, now that his tower's been pushed. And actually, in, this is one of those situations where, in a twisted way, it's going to be good for the Beastmaster. He's probably going to get a lot of lane time because his tower's gone. It's much more difficult for Witchdoctor and Lone Road to chase him out. But that doesn't, you know, it, it only slightly uh, offsets the fact that Lone Druid's about to have a Midas yep. right now. Five minute Midas on Lone Druid, and that's not just like a rush Midas. He had the boots, the Orb of, Valum, uh, Orb of Venom, Stout Shield, Quelling Blade. He's not really skipped any of the small items, and if anything, done more what some Lone Druid plays do, and got picked up the boots on the Spirit Bear, so. Immediate Midas usage, and he's going aggressive once again. Gets the root onto Beastmaster. There's also a dive at bottom on the Spectre. Spectre hiding out in the trees will kick the Beastmaster. He's rooted up again. He goes down, and Spectre, it looks like, with the dagger over the trees, will survive for Elements, but Alternate are just bullying Elements all over the place. It just seems like they're individually outplaying them. Like, I don't even attribute too much of what's happening right now to the draft. Um, the bounty's kind of getting what you'd want out of the pick, but Alternate just, like, outskilling them in mid lane and top lane, and that, to me, seems more what's going on right now than anything else. Yeah, I, I completely agree, and I'm not sure... I mean, this is what I was actually talking about, the way to do it. Oh, there's a sentry wall that spots the Bane, and Invis Rune is not going to help you. You need one more hit for Puck. Not going to get it, actually. Oh, he gets the Puck. He snowballs back in, though, John. Gets one more right click. He gets the kill. He makes it out of this one. Sunstrike. Phase shift is there, and he doesn't walk into it in the end. Now Satan in trouble as Bounty rocks up. He's going for the TP. I don't think he's going to make this one. Again, the kind of misplays, quote-unquote, continue. As Spectre, who's haunted... Oh, hasn't haunted him. He just nope. TP'd him with a dagger. dagger. He's level 5 only. Has an urn, trying to get those first couple of urn charges, which can really change like the state of the game for a Spectre, but doesn't find them, and a big, big I, loss I, for I, elements. I feel like one of the first kind of rules of thumb of Spectre is, you, we talked about it so much, you, like, you wait to level 6 and then you get involved. Like, coming to the fights even before level 6 is a sign of desperation. This early on in the game, that's what I think it is. It's They, they just don't want to be losing that many heroes over and over and over, but they don't actually get anything out of it. Went for a Sunstrike, that wouldn't have killed him anyway, didn't have the damage, but... This is just looking disastrous. It looks like Lone Druid is actually maybe going for the Vlads before the Radiance, at least he's picked up a few small components. Often you see the Bassy Ring just picked up for the, the Mana Sustain, so you can spam out your Rabbit as well as your Battle Cry, but... I'll have to wait and see if he goes for that Radiance Rush or drops, stops off for the Vlads. Well, this is... we did say this in the lane stage, it's... You can be, deal with Spectre by owning its lane and all the other lanes, and that is what Alternate have done so far. Yeah, they've won um, all three lanes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Apparently um, it is possible, Scan, to make your game plan win all three lanes. <laughs> yeah, and pack has got a new Dream Coil, so there's going to be more action in this mid lane right now, yeah. I think. Yeah, he goes in, he gets two! Supreme! Perfect placement on that one. The TP in from Nisha, he's going for Satan, who gets a great body block from the tree, and so I can only imagine, yeah, Bane's going down as well. John, what's well, Supreme. This, this game's just quickly snowballed out of control. Five of the six top farmed heroes in the game, all on the alternate side. Everyone's having a rough time. It's Spectre who's having the best time, and that's with that like wasted TP in mid. He's still farming all right, but it's it's looking absolutely grim right now for elements. I want to say this feels like even more one-sided out of control than the first series game one that we crossed, yeah. and that game was over in 15 minutes. I mean, I'm so, looking okay. at this like, I, I would... Con one more lost fight, and I think elements may just GG out. Like, that's... That's pretty much the state of this game right now. Yeah, it's I mean, one lost fight from game? just an insurmountable comeback. You've got Spectre, but it doesn't matter if Spectre's doing well. I feel like even if Spectre somehow gets like a phase drums and gets a radiance at an okay timing, like everyone on alternate's gonna be farmed. Like this Invoker is so far. He's 1500 net worth. He's 0 4. Oh boy. Polish Dota <laughs> is crushing Team Elements right now. Yeah, and I, I remember. Earlier in the previous series, you were talking about how one team had five players in the top seven, and he had alternate at five in the top six. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, the the one that's meant to be up there for the side of elements is a Spectre, and the Spectre is hardly doing well. It's you know, I mean, okay, half fine, the net worth of Lone Druid. <laughs> that that says it all, really. <laughs> it's three k to six point one k net worth. I mean, part of that is an inflated net worth on Lone Druid, but I don't think you can attribute it all to that. And you know what's great? I mean, Bounce Dancer is not even level 6 yet. We haven't even seen tracks. Like, yeah. it's, when the track goes online, if the game follows the current trajectory, it will just, like, 10k lead to 20k lead in no time. And Well, not that when you're ahead you get kills, it's like they don't give you a huge bounty because of the way, like, the, the gold bounties work. When you're ahead, you're not getting as much, as much money, but track is, like, a it's a static amount. You're always going to get the track money, so that kind of plays into the fact that, like you say, you can go from a 10k to 20k gold lead. Well, this is, uh... 
completed Blink Dagger on Puck now at the 10 minute mark and I think the rest of the drama Whoa. on Age is proper. 12k net, net, net worth advantage. I just popped that open for a second and was kind of astonished by just how big it was, the lead. Yeah, greater than 10k lead at 10 minutes. That's like, statistically, I think that's like almost 100% win rates, historically. I mean, anything um, at like 1k gold per minute gain is just ridiculous in itself, but they've exceeded that. Okay, well, Beastmaster does have raw, so it is possible to make kills, and if Bane and Tusk can get their level 6s, those will also help in terms of making kills. Remember, the Spectre can obviously always haunt in. Mm -hmm. Once you have those ultis up, it's pretty big, but they're going to go straight after the Spectre. And, and that's a good thing to do against Spectres. Rather than fight elsewhere and give him chances to haunt in, you go gank him, because you know he's often going to be alone, and, well, that's exactly what's happening. They're going to get one, and it looks like the second pickoff is very likely here. A level 4 Tusk, not much he can do, although he can get out of the Sprout. The tree of block, oh my gosh, that is so nice. The summon there, the placement of it, that is just heads up play coming out from Nisha. There's no trees actually blocking him, but he just places the summon such that he actually gets the block off and finds that kill. Yeah, it's really nicely done. And I mean, some of the top lane alternates are gonna, well, sorry, elements that are gonna try and get this lone bird. No grip. Oh, and there's the battle cry. Spectre haunt, Satan coming in as well. Okay, they should be able to get this kill now. Spectre getting the last hit in. There we go, Urn Charge is online! <laughs> Woohoo! You know what, instinctively I checked, like, did Spectre buy back? But it's just like, he's so weak that That's... <laughs> the respawn time was like, pretty quick, ready to haunt back into the That's next actually point. a 2k gold swing. That's just how abs absurd this lead is right now. It's one of those things where I feel like, if you're this far behind, you deserve to be this far behind, and you should not be getting to, like... <laughs> I feel like against the idea that you get 2k gold as a team out of one kill like that. Like one small mistake from Lone Druid is just, yeah, they're, st yeah, it, they're still miles behind, but do they really deserve 2k gold when they screwed up the early game that badly? Yeah, it's it's complicated. I'm not I'm not sure. It's This is something, it's funny, like when there's a new patch and there's gold changes, we talk a lot about those changes for a while and then it just disappears from the discussion after that. And yeah. I'm, I'm not completely, like, I don't know, do you, are you happy with where the overall gold situation is when it comes to kills in, in Dota right now? I think the 10 to 20 minute stage especially, because there's some heroes who get quote unquote behind, but by nature, like Spectre is the best example of a hero that doesn't necessarily free farm all that well, but once he starts getting a kill or two, he just gets absurdly out of control. Um, it was actually one of the, when, when asked, um, like, oh, what do you want to see change in the new patch? That was like the first thing which comes to mind, it's just gold bounties and how they work. But... I don't it's, know. it's it's really difficult. Like how you know we've seen lots of different versions of it in the past, and it feels like there's there's. I mean, this is what happens to patches in general, but in terms of gold bounties as well. After a while, teams forgot. You know, well, this is how we exploit the current algorithm that exists in the game, and then like certain things are just much better than other things. Certain ways to play the game. Well, it's funny because I feel like so. so much of it not even comes from like teams figuring out how to exploit it, but it's done by feel. Like you just. You get this feel like, oh, this hero, despite not feeling that good or seeming that good in the patch, just somehow always kept, like, the Spectre, obviously the best pub example, but maybe less so pro games. But there's these heroes that just somehow... Nature's Prophet, probably a good example, because this hero fights and finds and get, gets involved in kills so well in, like, this stage of the game, you're always oh, going to find that catch up. Well, they get pop. How Some much more. gold this time? <laughs> 700 for Invoker. This is another 2k gold swing. Yep. Yep. <laughs> just that. <laughs> I mean, okay. Like, you get two I, kills, I, and that's a 4k gold swing out of two kills. I do totally agree with you that it's that's by feel, but I, I, I just think that people get that feel in every patch, and it ends up being some kind of distorted, like, these heroes are better than others, and Spectre, it's, it's difficult to- 2k gold, like, what, what's happening? I don't think- I think this game is still fine, like, alternate chances are going and win this game convincingly, but... They shouldn't be yeah. given these, like... I mean, you can you can say, oh, alternate shouldn't be making those mistakes and giving up those kills, but like that's just by nature what's going to happen. You're against a beastmaster who has glo who can, can provide vision anywhere on the map. You've got raw fiend script and a spectre horn. You're going to find kills with this. You smoke up, you find a kill, and there's not like any real misplay involved from alternate. Like when you go down to a gank like that, necessarily. Alternates are trying to kill Task in the bot lane. It's a track kill if they can get it, but here comes Spectre. This is the comeback money, you're happily trading one for one here, and it may even become a two for one. Flow tries to claw him blade out, but the cast will lock him in place with a creep. I can only imagine that, despite the track being there, I think it almost, again, favors elements. This is like the... Similar. It's funny because I've... 
I've had this like thought a few times and talked to a few people I've cast with, but this is probably the best game I've seen recently to like set as an illustration of the, the way the like weird things the gold bounty rules can do. Yep. It's just like how in what way does Spectre deserve to have like 2.6k gold at this oh, stage in this game? Invoker! Invoker was like number seven or eight on net worth, and suddenly he's involved in a couple kills. Well, basically uh, involved in two kills, and he's got drums plus Midas boots at 15 minutes in, which is a bit lackluster farm, but it's still like you're in the game at that point. He was completely out of the game, and with good reason. He played his lane badly. He got ganked. Like he he shouldn't be able to catch up as easily as just. Getting two kills, I feel. That, that to me is what's wrong with the system right now. Is a hero that's been shut down should remain shut down for at least a little bit longer. If he ha he should have to like play like go into his like hyperbolic chamber, farm for like ten minutes, and then come out and be caught up. It shouldn't be like a oh you get a kill and you're you're fine. Yeah, I I I mean, I I like the basic concept of like when you're behind, getting kills is a bigger deal. But yes. the numbers just seem bit too inflated right now. It kind of defeats the purpose of shutting down heroes and lanes because of just like I mean we go back to the, the discussion about Spectre and how oh part of maybe the best way to deal with the heroes is shutting them down in lane but you see games like this and you're like well is it really because if you're losing if you're losing other lanes while shutting down a Spectre I think Spectre will be just fine most of those games because of how well he can get involved in kills. I mean I I like the basic dynamic in for example oh there's gonna be a smoke here so let's mm -hmm. first see what happens they're close, they're if... narrowing in, but it doesn't look like they'll catch up. Supreme's ready to jump forward still. I think they might chase oh, all the cast. the cast. Have they got detection for this one? Doesn't look like it, and John will actually get caught out by the roar. Satan's staying inside the Ghost War for now, and they'll turn it around onto the puck. He gets the snowball off into the Nature's Prophet. Meanwhile, the Spectre changes his mind and goes back for the Nature's Prophet. Needs to call him Blade through, and will do so. Tracks bouncing around with a cask, and we'll see. Elements. Couple more kills go their way, and Flo has 4.4k gold. Would you believe it? This Spectre is looking at a very well timed radiance, all things considered. <laughs> and this is like the other times that we've talked about gold swings, it's been alternate or split up across the map. They're all getting value, and so there's a big swing because one person gets picked off by like three or four, but actually the gold graph didn't change much, and this is the first time I think it actually takes quite a big swing back. Yeah. And that's because there were actually quite a few alternate heroes involved there. It's not like they were all split. It was, I think it was the only the lone road who wasn't there pushing a tower. Well, here's the because th the big thing is for me like a 10k uh, well, well it was a 12k gold lead at 10 minutes. That is massive. Like that's as big as it gets. That's like absurd. But right now we're looking at a 12k gold lead at 18 minutes, and that does suddenly does not sound as absurd. You're like, okay, you've got a Spectre whose radiance is coming online in two minutes. You're not. Th you're thinking like you still have a decent. 10-20% chance to win this game if you're only down by 12k gold as your Spectre Radiance comes online. So, for Elements, I mean, Elements obviously don't know, they don't see these numbers, but from like a Spectator point of view, you're like, well, suddenly this lead is, remains a lead, but it's it's no longer as scary. Yeah, and it's, I mean, look, I mean, if we take, if let's say we take into consideration the way the gold works and the teams know that and it plays into how they draft, you could criticize maybe Team Alternates in the sense yep. that their draft is really good at getting ahead in lane stage, but once the enemy team's all grouped up, alternate have sort of... It's something. It's a problem that especially I've seen teams run into when they have the safe lane lone druid. Because there's a phase in the game, but once he's got Midas before he has Radiance, that he's just sitting around farming on his own and not really involved with this team. It's something I... Complexity in particular, when Chelsea plays lone druid, he gets involved a lot more early on in the early pushes and fights, and I think that's actually like a really impressive thing. Like that they've clearly thought about. Yeah, and ultimately because of the fact that he, that first lone druid death is 2k gold, he should be grouping with his team, even though he wants to farm up his radiance. He'll farm it up much safer by going for towers with his team, by taking Roche and etc. So I, I definitely agree. Like ultimately, the patch works the way it does, and alternate need to play around the patch, which is something we have not really seen them do in the last five minutes of this stage of the game. But now they take Roche, and now they're grouping up, and they've got the bare radiance. So. They've also been waiting for this timing as well, so they'll meet the Spectre's Radiance with a Radiance timing of their own, they'll find the Beastmaster pick off and may actually charge forward here. Bear, gonna take out the Necro 3, takes a bit of damage, but does, yeah, does have a resummon, he's actually gonna TP home his Bear to heal it up, so he'll have two full HP Bears for this push, and, well, suddenly alternate actually ready to go high ground, so, despite Spectre having a Radiance, not easy to fight in because you've only got 1200 HP. And Witch Doctor's got level 4 heal, which almost exactly counters Spectre's ulti with Radiance, I think. It's, they're gonna need more than just the, the Spectre to uh, push away the, the push from Team Ultimate. Now, 
options are limited. It's gonna perhaps come down to the Invoker, who has got the one point in Wex, so can go into the Chaos Media for some extra damage here, but the bear already forcing out a Glyph, gets the tower down to half HP, then the jump comes out from John. he's just gonna throw down the Dream Call with the Death Ward as well, keeping elements back. They don't commit and follow up the Dream Call, but it's secured themselves a tier 3 tower. Exotic Deer, recognizing that his best bet right now is just going for the buildings, letting the Puck create that space, and another Haunt coming in now, it looks like Element's gonna make their stand, it does see a decent amount of damage output, the Tusk Snowball in as well to fall this one up, but no kills coming just yet, the Witch Doctor sustain. Doing what it needs to do, but the mana now limited here. Gets the wand off, gets some more heal coming out, but they've lost bounty. They're going to lose more here. Flow getting the one kill. The raw comes out as well. Where's the follow-up damage though, John? Phase shift, not level 4 phase shift. He's going to go down once. I don't think a follow-up kill is likely to be possible here. Deafening Blast will catch out. John gets the orb to the side. Nature's Prophet takes up Tusk. And now the tree and block again. Nisha on point with the micro. And the bear still alive. Has just the one bear. This may be enough to continue this push. John sidestepping the Sunstrike, that would have been a much needed kill. They've actually taken out the melee racks anyway, so they don't have to keep pushing down this bottom lane, but it looks like they want the range racks money as well. Yeah, they've actually got a BKB on their Nature's Prophet, so if he wanted to fight, he could, but Lone Druid can do it alone. And to get the Raxes, get out, and I think that, yeah, the Witch Doctor Buddha Restoration really helped them initially. In fact, at the time where uh, Ultimate started losing heroes, it's, I noticed it's when the Witch Doctor ran yes. out of mana. That's, that's like, <laughs> I clicked him too, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, the heal's doing work, and I click Witch, I'm like, oh, he's out of mana, and they started losing the fight. And then he popped his wand, and then he had like another 10 seconds of it. So yeah. that's, that's kind of like, that's what it feels like right now. As, as long as he's got mana up, there's just not enough damage output from elements to, to actually take a fight, to actually take heroes out. And they, they have to just keep throwing things over and over at alternates until Witch Doctor runs out of heal and, and then they can pounce. Now there's a Greaves though, so things get harder. And the Greaves upgrade from the mech is a pretty big deal just for the cooldown. I think one of the very kind of underrated aspects of the Greaves is just the, the, the constant spam you can throw out from this. So we'll see at alternate not even slow things down. They're instantly heading towards the top lane looking for a second lane of Rex. Yeah. So, I mean, it seemed like a bit of a hiccup, a few pickoffs adding up to monumental amounts of gold, Spectre got to Radiance, but the, increase, the, the lead's increased now substantially again, and Alternate, I think, while well on their way to getting a second side of Rax, it's going to be very, very difficult to defend this. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the, the, the Rax gives a big chunk of bounty to the Alternate side, and they're getting tracked all as well from these team fights. so... On the high ground they go, Bear just chunking away this tower, and without a Glyph, there's not much elements can do. They Nightmare up the Bear temporarily, but here they go, they're just going to fully engage and commit. They need the kills, they can't just force alternate back, and Raw coming out, Nisha the one locked in place, but with a BKB, he takes no damage whatsoever. Three kills to start things off, Flow off to the side, on the run. John has the mana. Can he get this kill? Looks like the TP out going to keep Flow alive, and Voka back in the base goes down, insta buyback, but second lane of Rax, really at this stage of the game, should seal the deal here in game number one, and if they really want, I imagine they can even go for the Mega Creeps here. Not much elements can do to defend. Yeah, Invoker buys back, but it's... I mean, it's symbolic. He's bought back so he can go Midas a Creep, I think. It's, yeah, <laughs> He's not even go. getting the full money for it. <laughs> so... <laughs> poor, poor um, guy. He's got a Deafening Blast. He's gonna stop off a little bit. And I think they might be able to... Yeah, they prevent the Megas, just for now. Yeah, I think the Aegis expired, or was used. Uh, okay. No, yeah, they, they, they used it up. Oh, yeah, they used up in the bottom fight. What am I talking about? Uh, the fuck earlier. But um, they'll regroup, pick up a few more items. Hood picked up for a bounty. Won't have a pipe necessarily super soon. Well, he needs to find the farm. To find the farm, he's going to have to win a, like, win a fight, and that probably means good game. Realistically. Yeah, and the gold leaders. <laughs> Oh, Pipe on the Witch Doctor. They're going, they're going Hood plus Pipe. Witch Doctor's like, nah, we, we want this item now. I'm, forget it, Bounty. I'll buy it for us. Yeah, I mean, they need to end the game in the next few minutes. Do, got... do they really need to scan? I'm sure this this game could probably drag out, to be honest. I don't know. There's some they've. I, I, no, I'm just imagining they've like <laughs> they've got their some compendium challenge or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like... Must win in under 27 yeah. minutes. Or... I was like, I don't if know. this game goes 45 minutes, I don't see an alternate losing it <laughs> based on their current. Yeah, game. yeah. I guess if it goes 45 minutes, it's because they're losing a bunch of fights. It's more if they like fell back and just farmed and avoided fights for 30 minutes. Then I don't see them losing. Oh, that's a dead ban. That is a dead ban. Chuck out a roar here. That one going out on Nietzsche, but it's a, it's a dying roar and Invoker, he's got no buyback. Not that that kind of metrics really matter at this stage of the game. Three kills, make it four in just a second, and there we go. Flow GG's out. Ended up 
a tiny bit closer than what it maybe should have been then. We definitely kind of saw some of the mechanics of how the comeback goal works and ultimately it didn't lead to a comeback, so no way for Elephant yeah, I mean, back in this game. If Ultimate don't have a Witch Doctor, if they don't have some sort of heal like a Witch Doctor or Dazzle, or really only two heroes that do that, then I think the Spectre's Radiance as it comes online might actually do a lot. Like, yep. unfortunately the, the exact right kind of hero to just turn that off Nullify it and uh, <laughs> John the Baptist triumphs over the Lord Satan, good, good beats evil. It's just game one, you know. You know, if I've, <laughs> I've read enough storybooks, evil will bounce back, take game two before uh, the game three victory for the good guys, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that, that just started off with with the, what, the bad guys losing for most of the, the series. I don't know. I don't know my Star Wars. <laughs> but yeah, it's... what I do know is game number two is coming up. We'll take a break. We'll be back with Star Ladder Invitational European Qualifiers. And uh, that's going to kind of play out over the next four to five days before we know which team is going to be joining the invited teams in Kiev for the land finals, April 14th to 17th, to compete for 100,000 US dollars. But for now, you're listening to Gods as well as Scant. Stay tuned. Game two coming up next. <laughs> 